New and innovative techniques continue to emerge in helping preserve sexual function for men undergoing surgical therapy for an enlarged prostate. These newer techniques have been a significant contribution to our field, in particular to have available for men wishing to preserve their ejaculatory function, but who may not be candidates for less invasive approaches. Two newer techniques are providing significant improvement in sparing ejaculatory function compared to the traditional technique for transurethral section of the prostate or TERP while providing comparable improvements in symptoms and quality of life. Preservation of ejaculation is often viewed in a positive light by patients and their partners. For many men, this factor weighs heavily when reviewing all of their options carefully for BPH. So stick around to learn more. So the big question is this, how can men and those who care for them better educate themselves regarding prostate health, the conditions that affect the prostate, and the latest technology in managing these conditions? That is the question, and this podcast will provide the answers. On a weekly basis, we'll be chatting with experts, innovators, and leaders in the field of urology, sharing useful information with the general public to improve their lives and increase their overall health. My name is Dr. Garrett Pullman, and welcome to the Prostate Health Podcast. Prostate Health Podcast is for informational purposes only. Nothing in this podcast should be construed as medical advice. By listening to the podcast, no physician-patient relationship has been formed. For more information and counseling, you must contact your personal physician or urologist with questions about your unique situation. Benign prostatic hyperplasia, or BPH, also called prostate gland enlargement, is a common condition as many men get older. In fact, about half of all men between ages 51 to 60 have BPH, and up to 90% of men over 80 have it. It is important to note that BPH is a benign or non-cancerous condition. It does not lead to prostate cancer. With that being said, BPH and prostate cancer can coexist at the same time. So it is still important for men being evaluated for BPH to be screened for prostate cancer where appropriate. As the prostate enlarges with age, it can start to press on the urethra and ultimately cause blockage of the urine flow from the bladder. This can result in quite bothersome urinary symptoms that can affect a man's quality of life. Some of the more common symptoms include the frequent need to urinate both day and night, weak or slow urinary stream, a sense that you cannot completely empty your bladder, difficulty or delay in starting urination, having the urgent need to urinate, and dribbling at the end of urination. As a urologist, I feel very fortunate to be practicing in an era now with new advances in technology which are allowing me to better care for my patients who suffer from symptoms of an enlarged prostate. And with that, we are seeing another paradigm shift in the treatment of BPH. With the surge in office-based minimally invasive surgical therapy with the abbreviated name of MIST, M-I-S-T. I believe one of the driving factors for this shift is that the newer MIST treatments have minimal to no sexual side effects. And one of those side effects that many men are looking to avoid is retrograde ejaculation. Well, what is retrograde ejaculation? This is where semen enters the bladder instead of exiting through the penis during orgasm, also known as normal antegrade ejaculation. Retrograde ejaculation may also be referred to as a dry orgasm. This can definitely be a sticking point for men looking to preserve this aspect of sexual function, when weighing their various treatment options for BPH. Losing the ability to ejaculate may lead to a subsequent decrease in sexual pleasure. Retrograde ejaculation can also cause male infertility. When looking back in time at some of the side effects of the more common treatments for enlargement of the prostate, retrograde ejaculation has been a common theme. An almost inevitable side effect of the conventional transurethral resection of the prostate, or TERP, has been retrograde ejaculation occurring in 65 to 80 percent of men who underwent the procedure. This loss of ejaculation has been, at least for some men, a major reason for avoiding the procedure and opting for medication back when we didn't have missed therapies available at the time, such as the Urolift procedure. Retrograde ejaculation, however, can also be seen with medication used to treat an enlargement of the prostate, including alpha blockers, with one of the more common ones used being tamsulosin, or the brand name known as Flomax. Now, many men have been shifting to missed therapies that have minimal to no risk of retrograde ejaculation. 
The Eurolift system is able to preserve sexual function, including no reports of retrograde ejaculation. Resume is another office-based minimally invasive therapy with reports of a 6% risk of retrograde ejaculation. Now looking at aquablation, which we have also previously covered back in episode 30, with reports ranging anywhere from 2 to 10%. Now unfortunately, not every man is a candidate for these minimally invasive options based on certain aspects of their prostate anatomy, such as an enlarged intravesical median prostatic lobe, yet they still desire to preserve sexual function. Now, before we get into some of the more new and innovative techniques for the TERP procedure, I think we should first look at why this side effect can result from the procedure. One of the more common theories as to why retrograde ejaculation occurs with the TERP procedure is due to the loss of bladder neck function after resection, with the thought that the bladder neck musculature is needed to contract in order for the process to work normally. Well, this theory has been challenged with research with clinical, physiologic, and anatomic findings demonstrating otherwise. In a study out of Germany, video urodynamic observations actually show a persistent opened internal bladder neck in patients able to ejaculate in a normal antegrade fashion. It has now been demonstrated that the components near the apex of the prostate, not the bladder neck, are important for preserving ejaculatory function. More specifically, preserving the tissue near and around the vero montanum. Well, what is the vero montanum? Also known in the urology world as the vero. Well, when looking inside a man's urethra with the telescope, the vero montanum is a small raised area in the prostate and is where fluid from the seminal vesicles and testicles empty. This anatomic landmark has long been used as a guiding point by urologists more so in the past to protect a man's urinary control. While performing TERP, or laser vaporization procedure, making sure not to resect or laser past this point as to not damage a man's external sphincter muscle and risk urinary incontinence. But now, also preserving some of the tissue around the structure, especially one centimeter proximal to it, is becoming important in preserving ejaculatory function for modified techniques in performing the TERP procedure. So today... I'm going to review two ejaculate preserving TERP techniques, both of which I have incorporated into my current clinical practice. The first technique is called the ejaculate preserving middle lobe only transurethroid section of the prostate. So some men, in addition to having the two obstructing lobes pressing in on the urethra from the sides, have a third obstructing portion or lobe of the prostate that can protrude up into the bladder right in the middle, also known as a middle or median lobe. This lobe, in a sense, can act as a ball valve blocking off the urine flow. So, for this technique, only the middle lobe is removed, either with transurethroid section or vaporization of the tissue in an effort to provide improvement of urinary symptoms but also preserve ejaculation. The results have been promising with reports of only 2-3% to retrograde ejaculation, but also a sustained improvement in symptoms including a 10-point reduction in symptom score. Now, with this being said, some of the missed techniques are being utilized to treat some men with median lobes, including the Eurolift and the Resume procedure. But again, not every man is a candidate for those techniques. Now, the second technique really takes this a step further, which is a technique that originated out of Germany. With this technique, essentially all of the obstructing prostate tissue, including the bladder neck and lateral lobes, are resected. What is preserved, however, is a one centimeter safety area around the vero montanum particularly proximal to the vero. This was a smaller study compared to the middle lobe only study, but still decent results with only 9.2% retrograde ejaculation rate and an 18 point reduction in symptom score. These newer techniques have been a significant contribution to our field and should be increasingly added by urologists to their armamentarium, in particular to have available for men wishing to preserve their ejaculatory function, but who may not be candidates for less invasive approaches. The two newer techniques are providing significant improvement in sparing ejaculatory function compared to the traditional TERP technique, while providing comparable improvements in symptoms and quality of life. Preservation of ejaculation is often viewed in a positive light by patients and their partners, and again, for many, this factor weighs heavily when reviewing all of their options carefully for BPH. Well, thank you for joining me today on the podcast. Now, if you haven't had a chance to check out my free mini webinar where I discuss my top three tips to promote a man's prostate health, but also longevity and quality of life, you can still do so. To access the webinar, just go to 
www.prostatehealthpodcast.com forward slash men's health to check it out. And we'll also be providing the link here in our show notes. Well, we'll see you next week for the next episode on the Prostate Health Podcast. Take care. Thank you again for listening to the Prostate Health Podcast. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at gpullmanmd. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Thank you.